已經達到法定開會嘅人。Um, as we've got a quorum already, I now call to order the meeting of the education panel. Today we have、um, a public hearing. So let's invite the administration and the deputations in. Thank you. 早晨，局長。Good morning, Secretary. Please be seated. 你哋係咪要按照佢哋嗰個？早晨，秘書長，請坐。Good morning. 早晨，添哥。請坐，請坐。學生。早晨。都有啲咩嘅？都有啲 mix 嘅。我應該要有啲時間要輸過去政制嗰度坐下。我個要咯。咁你唔好啊！你做主席啊！早晨，早晨，早晨，早晨。早晨。阿博士喺前邊，阮博士喺前邊嘅。Um, Doctor Yuan, please. Um. Sit here in the front row on the left. Morning. All right.、Um, are we all ready? Thank you very much. Good morning. I would like to thank the administration and the deputations for coming. So this public hearing is、um, on. Um, issues related to the regulation, governance, and quality assurance of the self-financing post-secondary sector. And um, please uh, wear the earpiece and choose、um, the right channel.、Uh, channel zero floor. Channel one Cantonese. Channel two English. Channel three ca-、uh, Putonghua. And if you need any assistance, please、um, approach our staff. A total of、um, 52 deputations will be attending today's public hearing. So this、um, hearing will be、um, divided into two sessions. In fact, your、um, submissions have already been forwarded to members and to the administration. I would like to remind you that.、Um, Uh, neither your verbal、um, nor、uh, written submissions will be covered by the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance. And may I also draw your attention to the、um, points to note on、uh, members of the. Uh, for members of the public attending electrical meetings, or members of the public observing meetings in the public gallery.、Um, Some security measures are included in this、uh, points to note, and、uh, in fact,、um, the、um, paper has been tabled before you. And、uh, if necessary,、um, you can also approach our security staff for a copy. I'll invite each deputation to speak one by one, and each deputation will only be given three minutes. And um, um,、uh, when the t- when the time is up, is up I'll、um, have to ask you to stop. So please be concise. But、uh, before I invite deputations to speak, I'll、um, first invite the Secretary for Education to say a few words to us. Yes, Chairman.、Um, thank you. We want to provide diversified study pathways for our young people.、Uh, we also want to ensure quality 
of、um, post-secondary education, and we support the parallel development of the publicly funded and self-financing post-secondary education sectors. The self-financing sector can respond very quickly to changing society needs and can play a very important role in. Upgrading the quality of the human resources in Hong Kong by offering a wide variety of programs for school leavers, our workforce, and the community at large. And so we have、um, land grant schemes.、Um, We have the、uh, self-financing post-secondary education fund. We have the.、Um Six matching grant scheme, the research endowment endowment fund, and a student financial assistance schemes, and so on and so forth, to upgrade the quality of our tertiary education. Self-financing、um, um, tertiary institutions enjoy a high degree of autonomy and academic freedom. Self-financing tertiary institutions do not receive recurrent. Government subvention, and so、uh, in formulating our oversight and regulatory mechanisms, we are guided by the principles of reasonableness and proportionality. We attach great importance to enhancing transparency, protecting students' rights, and ensuring um, uh, good um, governance or quality assurance. At the moment, over 38 percent of our young people in a relevant cohort have access to degree-level education in the 2013-2014 academic year, and including sub-degree education, nearly 70 percent of them now have access to post-secondary education. Now, in the coming few years, the number of um, um, students、uh, in the、uh, relevant cohort.、Um, Will、um, drop. The number of secondary school leavers will、um, drop from sixty-two thousand in twenty fourteen to forty-two thousand seven hundred in twenty twenty-two. In a twenty fourteen policy address, the CE、um, announced a series of measures to nurture talents in Hong Kong.、Um, and with.、Um, All these measures being fully implemented, and with a drop in the number of、um, secondary school leavers, and、uh, assuming that、um, students' academic um, uh, results um, remain more or less at the same level, we should be able to, by 2016-2017, provide a sufficient number. Of、uh, publicly funded and self-financing、um, first degree, first year、uh, places for all those who、um, uh, meet the、um, relevant requirements. So,、um, concerning tertiary education, we're going to enter a consolidation stage, both in terms of quality and quantity. And concerning、um, quality assurance and.、Um, Governance in the self-financing post-secondary sector. There,、um, we have the report of the consolidated study on local and international good practices in the governance and quality assurance of the self-financing post-secondary education sector. I will be inviting Mr.、Um, Tim Loy, Chairman of the.、Um, CSPE、uh, to say a few words. Thank you. So may I now invite Mr. Tim Loy, Chairman of the、uh, CSPE, to say a few words. Our committee was set up in April 2012. So concerning、um, macro issues and strategic issues of common concern to the self-financing post-secondary sector, we、uh, provide a platform for discussion of macro issues and strategic issues. We hope to promote good practices, to promote quality, transparency, and good governance. In fact. 
we uh, have been uh, um, trying to um, enhance some um, governance and transparency in the sector, and we also uh, want to step up our communication with the sector in order to um, ensure uh, quality and uh, sustainable development of the sector. Um, a consultancy study uh, was commissioned, and today we are discussing this report. The consultants have looked at local, regional, and international experience and have um, um, studied uh, major trends in terms of governance and quality assurance. In the process, consultants consulted um, relevant stakeholders in Hong Kong, including quality assurance agencies and self-financing tertiary institutions. Uh, in fact, the consultancy study was published in August last year and in November last year. A, a um, sharing session was held with um, stakeholders. Uh, on um, good practices in the governance and quality assurance of the self-financing post-secondary education sector. And in fact, we are now um, in uh, the stage of a, a consultation exercise on the code. And um, the consultation period will expire um, in the middle of March. We'll look at governance, design of curriculum, uh, support for staff, students, and other um, support in terms of resources. And we hope that this um, code of good practice um, can promote um, sustainable and quality development of the self-financing post-secondary education sector. And on behalf of the um, CSPE, I want to say that I welcome your views, and I promise that I'll bring your views back to the committee for detailed discussion. And that your views will definitely help us draw up um, a good code of good practices. So I'll now invite the deputations uh, to speak. Each deputation will be um, given um, three minutes. First of all, uh, Dr. Joy Shi, Hong Kong Institute of Technology. She is the president of the institute. Good morning. I understand that um, chairman and members are concerned about the quality of self-financing post-secondary education. We need your support. Now, concerning the code of practice mentioned in the study, um, uh, of course, um, we need further discussions on uh, the financial aspects. But then for other aspects, I think we um, more or less have um, um, common uh, practices. So how can we make sure that we can comply with these um, 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 good practices? Now, uh, concerning the recent student movement, we can see that, in fact, uh, more communication um, between officials and students and institutions uh, can um, help um, um, promote mutual understanding. In fact, we hope that officials can um, um, visit um, the campuses. Please, uh, in fact, we do want to, um, um, officials to sit on our councils. We hope that um, you can understand our situation, and we hope that. Um, um, a coherent, unbiased policies can be formulated to promote um, the uh, development of the self-financing post-secondary education sector. We understand that um, Mr. C. H. Tong uh, uh, wanted more students to have the opportunity to receive tertiary education, and uh, um, and as a result, uh, the development was um, uh, promoted without really very detailed planning. And and, and now we see that um, some secondary schools have to be closed down, and then some self-financing post-secondary institutions have um, um, to be downsized, and um, some of the teaching staff um, cannot have their contracts um, renewed. So how come you are um, um, continuing to allow new institutions to be set up and uh, and uh, to allow new institutions to um, introduce um, these um, courses? Now, um, in fact, um, the, the government knows 
the situation very well. You know, uh, if institutions have to compete for survival, then um, they they cannot attach um, uh, a lot of importance to quality. Look at uh, the situation in Taiwan. Look at the uh, landscape in the tertiary sector in Taiwan, and hope that this in Hong Kong will not um, uh, see uh, such things happening. And then concerning um, the uh, study subsidy scheme for designated professions sectors, subsidizing up to 1,000 students. Why is it that you are only um, uh, um, setting a quota of 1,000? Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shi. Next, we have Professor Benjamin Wa, Provost, uh, HKCU. Thank you. Chairman, I want to say that the CUHK fully supports the code of practice. In fact, we have uh, CUSCS and also taught po um, postgraduate um, self-financing programs. I want to say that we attach great importance to quality assurance and also financial aspects and also support for our students. Concerning the first aspect, QA, for our self-financing programs, now for each program we offer, um, there is great relevance and societal importance. When we um, introduce a program, we make sure that the program content is related to um, uh, the Hong Kong context and can promote um, the development of the Hong Kong community. The QAC has uh, recently visited us and concerning our self-financing programs, they are assessing us and our performance. Then in the QAC report, it is um, mentioned that there is a program review once every three to six years ex involving external benchmarking, external examiners, uh, for the assessment of the quality and the uh, feasibility of our various programs. And then our self-financing program is very important for the academic development of the university. Many um, uh, teachers use in load teaching. Uh, in other words, they um, teach self-financing programs uh, not for money but uh, for the development of the university. On the second aspect about finance, our university pays attention to the point that there is no cross-subsidy because cross-subsidy is an important factor to the UGC and we have to make sure that the quota of all self-financing programs is limited. They cannot take in students on an unlimited manner. And concerning all financial statements and financial practice, uh, we would publicize them. Support for students. We have extensive scholarships for students. So for those poor students and those who cannot afford the self-financing programs, we offer scholarship programs to support them. We have extensive academic advising to the students. That's all I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wa. Now, when deputations speak, please try your best to avoid a mixture of English and Chinese because we do have uh, simultaneous interpretation and also verbatim um, reports. Okay, Professor Wa, can you please leave your uh, speech or speaking notes with us. Next, Professor Peter Yun, Dean, College of Professional and Continuing Education of the Hong Kong Polytech uh, Polytechnic U. Thank you. Concerning the code of practice and the recommendations, basically we are in support. Most of the recommendations have been implemented in our college. However, concerning disclosure of detailed financial information, we have reservations. Now, in our integrated financial reports or um, consolidated financial statements, there's the financial position of the self-financing program so the public can get the information easily. Now, concerning financial data, it is more meaningful to uh, disclose the information to the um, uh, quality assurance organizations. Now, they will assess the financial position of the college to see whether financial position will affect the quality of teaching. This is more important. 
whether or not it is a good or bad thing to have a deficit or surplus depends on the overall condition of the college and long-term plan. If you only refer to uh, the data for one year, you cannot really um, draw any conclusion. For not-for-profit uh, organizations and those without government support, uh, it is important to have accumulated surplus. And in many other countries, uh, endowment fund is being created with such accumulated surplus so that there is stable development for the university. In some renowned universities, the endowment fund uh, has a total amount of over 10 billion USD. A few years ago, we borrowed 1 billion Hong Kong dollars to build the campus. So there is the need to retain some surplus to make repayment, to upgrade the facilities, and to offer scholarship to students. If you take 2013-14 as an example, we use our own resources to offer a scholarship of over 27 million to students, and over 5,000 students benefited. For our tuition fee, since um, 10 odd years ago when we were established, we only uh, adjusted it upwards four times. And the magnitude is uh, lower by 50% than inflation rate. In the past, we experienced a deficit. And this year, we will also, going to, uh, we will also have a deficit, budget deficit. And then if you talk about the surplus of the college, it is not um, beneficial to the college's development if you only um, look at surplus on the surface. And it is not good for the students and the graduates as well. Thank you. Next, Mr. Uh, Professor Edwin Wong. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the president of Hong Kong Nanyang College of Higher Education. My name is Edwin Wong. Different school sponsoring bodies um, establish private colleges, and they have different missions. Education is not only for training students to take jobs. It is about uh, training for personal growth. At the beginning, colleges are smaller in scale. There are fewer students. But growth is a process. So I hope that the government will uh, allow some space for the institutions to grow. The number of students is important, but it doesn't. Um, it, it isn't equivalent to the quality of school sponsoring. Now, for our uh, college, uh, the funding all comes from the school sponsoring body. We support a good uh, code of practice developed by the Education Bureau. It can be uh, for reference and uh, freely adopted by different institutions. It shouldn't become mandatory. Now, the uh, sector can then uh, develop in a healthy way. The consultation document is a good start for this kind of code of practice. We think that the content is reasonable, and it can take into consideration different aspects, like enhancing the degree of transparency and satisfying the right to know of the public and the students. However, we hope that after the code of practice is uh, being finalized, there will still be regular communication with various institutions and stakeholders. And there's also the need for uh, constant revision. I hope the code can um, draw reference from good management experience of various colleges. Self-financing institutions should not be asked to disclose too much financial data. Finally, I hope the Education Bureau can help various self-financing institutions to promote and um, publicize their programs in the mainland and overseas. And there should be standard, um, there should be a uniform standards for student enrollment. And there shouldn't be a ceiling of, for example, 10 or 20 percent of student enrollment. I think that the limit should be at uh, the number of students allowed by the uh, accreditation authority. Thank you. Next, uh, Dr. Louis Ma. Thank you, Chairman and members. I represent the City University of Hong Kong School of Continuing and Professional Education, and also CCCU. Uh, in order to avoid 
using a mixture of English and uh, Chinese, our script has already been uploaded to the web. I'm going to speak in English now. Governance and quality assurance of self-financing post-secondary education. We welcome the recommendations and agree that the principles of accountability, inclusiveness, transparency underpinning the report are crucial to the governance and QA of an academic institution. As a publicly funded university, CTU has a comprehensive set of guidelines and codes of practice in place to regulate its operations. We reckon that most of the good practices recommended in the report have been incorporated into the governance and QA policies and procedures of the School of Continuing and Professional Education, SCOP, as well as the Community College of CTU, CCCU. We wish to point out that conducting periodic review of the performance of members of the governance body uh, would be difficult to carry out, given the honorary nature of the appointment and the seniority of the members. Accordingly, we suggest that paragraph 1.4.3 of the report uh, could be, fi be fine-tuned. As for scope and CCCU, we overcome this particular issue uh, in the composition of our respective governing bodies and fee, uh, key committees, uh, we, we arrange uh, changes of the membership from time to time to ensure effective management of the uh, units. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Chang, Mr. Ray Chang from New People's Party. Our party attaches a lot of importance to future education development. On this uh, topic, we suggest that tertiary education policy should be reviewed in order to enhance uh, governance quality. And uh, education needs of local people should take priority. Our recommendations are as follows. Education should aim at enhancing overall quality of people. We should encourage students to have diversified uh, ability, especially creative ability, to meet the needs of society so as to maintain long-term competitiveness of Hong Kong. Now, um, for the self-financing programs, um, the, um, they differ a lot in terms of quality, so the graduates lack uh, market competitiveness. Uh, they find it very difficult to survive in the market. Education should not be blindly industrialized. Number three, whenever public resources are involved, um, the self-financing programs should satisfy local people's education needs. They should not be regarded as a means to make profits, to subsidize other programs by uh, the colleges. And uh, those who cannot be uh, admitted well, they also have their needs. Their needs should not be neglected. We think that the government uh, should formulate a code of practice in order to enhance transparency and governance quality. Various tertiary institutions have different ways of governance and circumstances. There should be some room for flexibility. However, we think that on the uh, fundamentals, there should also be uh, reasonable regulation. And number six, given future needs of our society, that should be a blueprint for good education development so as to ensure that the self-financing education sector can offer quality programs at the same time. Self-financing education in the Hong Kong education sector can have a clear positioning. So people who aspire to uh, have a career in this sector can upgrade their skills and knowledge. And there can be a very clear articulation uh, ladder so as to be better prepared for future education and employment. Thank you. Next, Professor Propos Proposka. We find that the proposed uh, four principles of good governance and quality assurance, namely participation and accountability, inclusiveness, performance, and transparency, would provide a sound basis for formulating the code of practice. We fully agree that transparency is instrumental for good governance and quality assurance, and we support that information related to the quality of the programs should be disclosed to stakeholders and members of the public. 
At the same time, we are concerned that some of the information provided could be misunderstood by the public and could create misconception and confusion. This could have damaging repercussions. In that respect, we suggest that the government should consider carefully and should define clearly what information and how it should be disclosed in order to ensure that the information would be correctly understood by all stakeholders in the sector. Furthermore, we support the view that in formulating the code for ensuring accountability and transparency, a delicate balance should be struck on the level of details and the extent of disclosure on information. We also have the view that the self-financing institution should have the flexibility and autonomy in decision-making on this matter. In respect of the format of the proposed code, we find that in principle the recommended sections of the code, namely institutional governance and management, program design and delivery, and staffing, physical resources and student support are acceptable as they focus primarily on factors which enhance the quality of student learning. We find also that the elements of the proposed code define a very meaningful and useful framework which will support the self-financing institutions in enhancing further the quality of their work. In our view, the requirements for disclosure are reasonable in general. However, some provisions, including those related to publishing of development plans and financial statements, have very sensitive nature and should be considered very carefully. Particularly, we do have strong reservation on disclosing financial data. We support the views that the implementation strategy should ensure that the code would not adversely affect the operation of the self-financing institutions, and we expect that the implementation of the code will facilitate the development of level playing field for all self-financing institutions. Finally, we support the view that measures have to be taken to facilitate the self-financing institutions in complying with the code on a voluntary basis. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, Dr. Chen Chuck He, uh, pr President and Principal of Hong Kong College of Technology. Thank you, Chairman. Our college fully supports the direction of the paper of the Education Bureau. So tertiary education must be diversified to face up to the diverse needs of society and there should be quality education to nurture our talents. And the four proposed areas, transparency, quality assurance, good governance and students' interests or, or our rights are important areas. But based on our knowledge and uh, sense of morality, we think that these are not the most important areas. If you look at students' interests, there are other more important things, for example, whether students have diversified choice and whether their academic qualification is well recognized. Can there be more support in terms of tuition fees, in terms of uh, laws and administrative management? Will there be a virtuous uh, competitive environment so that the sector can develop in a better way? In terms of academic qualification accreditation right now for associate degree. Uh, this is not uh, recognized on the mainland and overseas. Um, there is only accreditation of degree program. And uh, associate degree programs were only established quite recently. And after that, uh, there are a lot of misconceptions in society. And there is not a chance to clarify them. And individual incidents have affected this sector a lot. In terms of tuition fee uh, assistance, well, there is the financial assistance for 1,000 places. But then for uh, the associate degree program that had existed uh, the longest time, such assistance is not, uh, is not there. And there has not been communication, adequate communication with the um, institutions. I wonder if there is any communication on the objective and the uh, arrangement for these 1,000 subsidized places. About administrative management, well, the uh, institutions cannot quickly respond to social needs and uh, they cannot really recruit talents for the sector. I think these are some limiting factors that will hinder the uh, healthy development of the sector. Concerning the status and policies related to associate degree programs, um, things are not clear yet. There's a lot of ambiguity and uh, there is uh, 
lack of communication with the related institutions. In order to achieve the goals in the four areas, as I said, well, ev eventually we want to be diversified. We want to respond to social needs, offer quality education, and uh, nurture uh, the right talents. That's all. Thank you. Next, Dr. Sam Lau. So they appreciate the government's continuous support to the self-financing post-secondary education sector. With its large student enrollment, the sector plays an increasingly important role in not just providing the necessary human resources to meet the changing needs of Hong Kong, but in furthering Hong Kong's development as a regional education hub. Say, statistics from HKBU self-financing post-secondary education show that more than 80% of our associate degree graduates continue their studies each year locally and overseas. Tertiary revised statistics also confirm the, the encouraging prospect for sub-degree graduates. See, and it is the government goal to support the parallel development of the publicly funded and self-financing sector. The existing gap between the support to these two sectors must be bridged. Firstly, formulation of QA guidelines and regulatory framework. To ensure a su continuous, sustainable development of this sector, clear regulatory framework in terms of both the hardware and software components of a provider are needed as a way to monitor the key, the key matrix and also raise the public confidence in the sector. For hardware, the facilities requirements should include the average minimum physical space per student and staff to determine the maximum student capacity allowed. Facilities like the number of classrooms, computers, the volume of books in the library should be considered as key matrix. It is important that these essential basic hardware component be in place before a program is approved for student enrollment. For software, we should include the matrix like maximum ratio of full-time to part-time staff, ratio of student to full-time teaching staff, number of full-time guidance counselor, for example. Secondly, direct funding support to both the providers and the student. Given the self-financing nature of the program providers, where tuition fees are expected to be higher, the financial burden on students and their families could not be underestimated. It is not equitable for students from the publicly funded sector and the self-financing sector to, to be treated so differently in terms of resources support. Given the, the fact that the government has since 2014 been subsidizing 1,000 places per cohort to the four-year self-financing degree programs, consideration should be given to extend these subsidies to the self-financing sub-degree and top-up statistic, top-up degree programs. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one, Mr. Michael Schiff. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman and members. Our remarks are narrowly focused on the internationalization of Hong Kong's higher education sector. We applaud the Hong Kong government's efforts in this area, and this internationalization is a key reason that SCAD chose Hong Kong as the ideal lo location for students to pursue further education. SCAD Hong Kong is uniquely positioned not only to attract foreign students, but also to expose local students to cross-cultural education and retain these talents here in Hong Kong. SCAD Hong Kong endorses the implementation of a single quality assurance body and uniform policies and access to resources that create a level playing field for all of Hong Kong's locally accredited post-secondary programs. This quality assurance body should apply its same strict standards to local and non-local programs alike, ensuring the achievement of student learning outcomes and university missions. Hong Kong's current quality assurance system discriminates against locally accredited non-local post-secondary programs, resulting in separate and unequal treatment to the detriment of local students. For example, the technical refinements prevent non-local students enrolled full-time in locally accredited non-local programs from part-time work on campus. No such restriction is placed on non-local stu students enrolled full-time in locally accredited local programs. 
SCAD Hong Kong is concerned that this adversely impacts local students' access to important student services, such as peer tutoring in English. These peer tutor positions are almost entirely filled by native English speakers, most of whom are non-local. But since these students are prohibited from working part-time, the pool of eligible candidates is limited, and local students, who encompass 51.9% of SCAD Hong Kong's total enrollment, will, de will be disproportionately affected. The technical refinements also prohibit non-local graduates from staying in Hong Kong without an offer of employment. And it should be noted that non-local students include those of mainland China as well as those of other countries. Yet locally accredited non-local programs are barred from enrolling students from the mainland. Such restrictions will cause foreign students to lose interest in Hong Kong's locally accredited non-local programs. And those who do matriculate will not be able to contribute to the Hong Kong economy. SCAD Hong Kong has consistently complied with all applicable quality assurance standards, enrolls and provides financial support to an ever-growing number of local students, employs a workforce that is 99% local, has invested $82 million in revitalizing local facilities, directly contributes $42.8 million to local businesses, and enriches the daily lives of local residents. Yet we feel we have been denied the rights and privileges bestowed upon locally accredited local post-secondary programs because of our classification. SCAD Hong Kong strongly supports the government's efforts to attract and nurture the talents required for Hong Kong to maintain a competitive edge in the global marketplace. But if this is to be realized, thank you. Okay, Hawaii Hai Mangin uh, DAB, Mr. Tocho K. Uh, good morning, Chairman and members. It's been over 10 years for the development of post secondary uh, colleges in Hong Kong, especially for the associate uh, degrees offered locally, had met with some success. However, there are also those which fall short of the standards. In fact, some of them have become education shops, and they fall short of the uh, qualifications. And I've also cr come across many of such um, degrees or associate degrees which are shoddy. Of course, we are not offering Harvard uh, University education, and some of the colleges, the self-financing colleges, are open for basically business purposes, and we cannot blame them. However, in terms of hardware and software, there will have to be certain improvements. Associate degree students having to uh, take lessons uh, in um, billiard room or uh, spaces adjacent to billiard rooms or in shopping malls, of course, is not desirable. And also, there should be certain programs, such as Chinese uh, history and other relevant programs, which are uh, less so-called functional or so-called money-making programs, which are basically the main of what these colleges um, are offering. And further, in terms of information, for, from the Hong Kong government, I hope that there can be more disclosure of information instead of just providing on the platform, which is their website, some pre preliminary and uh, superficial information so as to increase the transparency and provide more information to the students and all concerned. HKCT Institute of Higher Education, Ms. Erica Lau. Yes, we are in support of this framework, and that is this uh, code. We are in support of that. We have a few responses to make as follows. First of all, every college will have its mission and also its purpose and its uh, characteristics. And, of course, there should be provision uh, there should be an array of these colleges providing different background and different characteristics of education, but we want to see that there is more room for operation of colleges such as us, and also there will be more room for our growth. But basically, the question is, what kind of mechanism, what kind of implementation model will there be? Is it our self-regulation 
or will there be some hard um, mechanisms meted against us? We do not want to see the latter. And we would agree that in terms of the implementation and uh, the measures which are in existence now, they are already a, a big part of the code. And we would want to see more communication between the government and also the colleges so that there will be more information on the actual implementation of the code and of the uh, policy going forward. Now, in terms of information disclosure, we ask and query whether it is indeed necessary for such fulsome disclosure. And uh, we certainly do not want to see misleading disclosure. And further concerning the quota or the limit for local Taiwan and Macau students. For self-financing uh, colleges, there is a ceiling. Should this not be reviewed so that ter tertiary education in Hong Kong can be more international? Thank you very much. Professor Chan Long Sang of the University of Hong Kong Space. Yeah, in terms of the report, the spirit and the principles we are in support. For the uh, Hong Kong U Po Leung Kok Community College and the um, University of Hong Kong uh, space, I am the deputy uh, director for both. And we already have the internal guidelines and the codes. Uh, but on the other hand, looking at the report suggesting that there should be a disclosure, including financial aspects disclosure, we are not in support of that because finance is uh, related to the learning and also to the quality and ac academic attainment of the students and the programs. But the financial information may be misinterpreted. Colleges are there for the long term. Very often we have to design new courses and new trajectories of the students in learning. And we therefore need different deployment of resources and funds. Now, there are two aspects of this. First of all, uh, concerning the acceptability of some of the courses, we would want to see the government assist the development and establishment of professional accreditation for certain professional re related um, courses. And secondly, provide more flexibility to the colleges so that they can accept more local students from Hong Kong. So Hong Kong can really become a, a cradle for tertiary education in the region. Next, uh, Ms. Dorte Christopherson of the Hong Kong Council for Accreditation of Academic and Vocational Service. Uh, the Council is a statutory quality assurance body for uh, and we are responsible for assuring the quality of locally uh, accredited and local self-financed in institutions without self-accrediting authority and non-local institutions and their programs. The criteria and standards that we already apply in our accreditation processes include institutional governance and quality assurance. So basically we assess the processes that operators have in place to assure appropriate uh, institutional governance and quality assurance, the effectiveness of these mechanisms and the capabilities of institutions to assure their own quality. So I'm not going to comment on the code per, per se, but uh, obviously the debate this morning, the views expressed and the implementation of the code will be very uh, important and relevant for the accreditation work that the Council does. And it will be interesting for us to see how the good practices that are uh, included in the code will have an impact on the, the work of uh, self-financed institutions. Thank you very much. Okay. Hong Kong Professional Teachers Union, Mr. Hong Ying Ho. Yes, indeed. We concerning the systems and the uh, institutes and colleges, we have the following opinions. 
In fact, this is not the first time that there is a consultant report from the government. Uh, actually, in 2010, there was another report which had raised 40 uh, uh, recommendations, of which 10 relate to self-financed colleges. However, they were not all implemented. One of the suggestions was to set up an independent uh, supervisory body, and the government shirked from that responsibility. We believe that the government cannot on the basis of self-financing, colleges being self-financing, allow them to be completely autonomous and do what they want. We have five recommendations. One, that there is an independent supervisory body set up to increase the supervision for self-financed uh, colleges as the, for the eight universities and the uh, courses and programs that they provide, there is a uh, accreditation policy. However, this is like uh, self-regulation and also in terms of the administration, the facilities and also the students' acceptance, these are not within their terms of reference. And secondly, in, uh, for the uh, qualification accreditation uh, uh, work on the assurance outside of the eight universities, we believe their work is on paper only. That is, their terms of reference is on paper only for the non uh, the colleges outside the eight. We believe that there should be streamlining so that there is no conflict of the roles so as to raise the supervision of the colleges. And the, another point is on the the number of uh, places. There is still a shortfall of uh, places. There should be a financed number of um, at least to the to 30 percent of all associate degree graduates to financed spaces at the universities and colleges. For a number of self-financed colleges, because of a lack of resources, the facilities uh, is insufficient at these colleges. We believe there should be certain funding for the establishment of the colleges so that the facilities and design of these colleges should reach at least a certain level. And there should be a $30,000 subsidy to the students so that there can be more resources for the students. Uh, if you cannot finish your presentation, I know you have two more points. Can you please leave us your uh, script for the speech? Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, this is Professor Lee Wing On, Vice President of the Open University of Hong Kong. Uh, we believe that there should be a uh, 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 quality assurance and governance uh, set of standards for Hong Kong. The accreditation uh, bu uh, had the body for accreditation had already gone through in detail the accreditation as well as the functioning of the colleges. The support to the eight universities is huge every year. However, it can only take care of 20% of the relevant age youngsters in Hong Kong to access education in these uh, financed universities. That is to say the rest of them will have to go to their own, use their own resources. And as a result of that, uh, the Self-financed colleges play a very important role in Hong Kong. However, their education and programs that they provide is fall short of the eight universities. However, their mission is still the same, and that is serving the community. And they will have to provide programs which respond to the fast-changing knowledge-based society of Hong Kong and also the fast-changing markets of Hong Kong to provide their training and education of personnel. And further, we should, with joint efforts, 
raise the quality of human resources for the next generation so that Hong Kong can be continually competitive internationally. Even though the self-financed colleges have done their best, however, because of a lack of resources, both financial and human resources, and at the same time having to respond to the fast-changing market and the community, and at the same time having to face a competition from the age universities, they face a lot of risks in their operation. And also the finances of the colleges are not easy to come by. They do not have major philanthropic uh, contributions. And also the students come from the average families of Hong Kong mainly. And therefore, they cannot raise fees significantly, even though theoretically they can do so. And also in terms of the qualifications of the faculty and the teachers and the design of the campus, um, uh, all these have to be done, so funding cannot be short. So we recommend that the government sponsor such colleges which use their own funding to provide tertiary education to the young people of Hong Kong. Yes, again, you have exceeded the time. If you have your script, would you please leave it with us? Thank you. The next. Uh, Mr. Chen Kohin of the Student Union of the Hong Kong Shuyan University. He is the president. Yes, on behalf of the Student Union of the Hong Kong Shuyan University and the Hong Kong Shuyan University as a private university and as a member of the student, I would like to talk about the uh, governance of uh, private colleges. Yes, Shuyan also faces uh, government uh, challenges, uh, academic development and uh, the programs, and there is a lack of uh, supervision of these colleges, and the running is very intransparent, and the student unions, the operation of the student unions are also not transparent. Only 30 to 40 members of the union uh, participated in the election of the EXCO of the student union and also the students are not able to access information financial and otherwise of the uh, university. For instance, there is going to be a new building built but we do not know what facilities are going to be provided. We would want to see the UGC uh, situation applied here, and that is the University of Hong Kong has its own uh, ordinance. We would want to see such ordinances set up so that the students will have the right to know and to see whether there will be unreasonable raising of uh, school fees and also whether there is an abuse of the system in accepting students into the uh, university. We also want there to be a supervisory body to look at the policies of the uh, colleges and also to have oversight on the transparency of the colleges. Otherwise, there may be uh, abuse. Uh, Dr. David Mo. On behalf of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, uh, Hong Kong U UST does not offer self-funded post-secondary programs, uh, but the university does welcome the admission of graduates of local sub-degree programs. Several hundred of these students join the university every year. The quality of these students is high, and the students adapt well, and they succeed in their studies at the university. HKUST supports efforts to develop appropriate quality assurance arrangements for the self-funded post-secondary sector. In this effort, HKUST believes that a shared understanding of basic standards for institutional governance and quality assurance can be helpful. In particular, agreement on standards can reduce ambiguity in the demands of QA agencies, encourage consistency in the conduct of reviews, and provide institutions with clearer direction in setting up their own QA arrangements. While the consultant's report provides a good starting point for further discussion, it is important to recognize that Hong Kong's post-secondary education has unique local characteristics. An important feature of local post-secondary education is the range and variety of institutions in terms of their mission, program, and legal basis. 
The proposed code provided by the consultant has been strongly influenced by national code of practices prepared for comprehensive post-secondary institutions, in most cases the university sector. While international good practices of value, care will need to be taken to ensure that the local conditions are taken into account. This is particularly true because quality assurance regimes cost, entail costs as well as benefits, and these costs chiefly fall on students so that any arrangements need to be proportionate to the benefits to students. In taking the discussion forward, it will be necessary to clarify the intended ownership of any code of practice. To the extent that such codes of practice are to cover local institutions with statutory authority to accredit their own programs and qualifications, broad agreement on any code and its application will be necessary. Uh, such broad agreement would be in line with international experience, which it confirms that the impact of quality assurance regimes is greater, where the institutions themselves have negotiated and adopted standards of good practice, and where arrangements are in place for the review and adjustment of standards over time. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Um, Chong Tat. In fact, I was the uh, president of the Xi'an SU um, in the um, 30th term. And uh, I want to say that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, the third or fourth hearing um, on this matter, so we can see that uh, progress in this um, regard has been slow, uh, as um, in the progress in uh, promoting and uh, uh, implementing universal suffrage. So cons um, uh, I, of course, um, um, endorse um, um, the principles of um, govern good governance and quality assurance. But then at the moment, the um, post-secondary education ordinance, I think, um, it, or the post-secondary uh, colleges ordinance is not enough, it's not adequate, and uh, we've seen uh, over-enrollment and other problems, and so the ordinance must be amended and updated. UGC-funded institutions have their respective ordinances um, to govern the uh, operation of the um, institutions concerned. So how come we can't have a similar arrangement for the um, self-financing post-secondary sector? Is it that um, some organizations still want to continue to operate those so-called education shops? In uh, overseas countries, there are many private universities, but then um, um, the, uh, the the governments do not just um, 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 uh, um, let them operate and uh, exercise no oversight. We need to protect the interests of the students. And the government needs to provide adequate support for self-financing self post-secondary institutions. And for self-financing post-secondary institutions, we should try to see democratization of um, um, the um, um, administration of these institutions. Institutions. Now, according to the uh, attendance list, um, the um, associate um, vice president of uh, my university um, should have been here, and I don't know why um, he, he um, cannot be seen. And uh, um, in the past, um, there, there was little uh, democratic element in uh, the uh, administration um, of um, the university. Um, I really hope that um, the uh, existing committees um, can um, um, be improved and there can be more uh, representation uh, on a part of the students and we hope that the students can um, uh, have more say in um, um, the making of um, policies. Now I want to say that Mr. Felix Sloan called the, or rather sent an email to the Secretariat yesterday um, saying that as um, he was feeling unwell he could not attend today's um, public hearing. All right. Um, next, we have uh, Professor Gilbert Fong um, from the Hengsai Management College. Terms, the proposed code of good practice, practices on governance and quality assurance is documented in the report. Overall, the college already has in place an effective governance 
internal control and quality assurance systems uh, system. We also have in operation uh, excellent teaching and learning and student support systems. We are committed to continuously review and improve our already good practices according to the internal policies of quality governance and XKCAA VK standards. While the college supports the proposed code of practices on good governance and quality assurance, there is also concern that if the code is to be applied unilaterally, unilaterally, universally, and without flexibility or without consideration for individual institutions' needs, it will be at the expense of institutional autonomy and may limit the vigor and creativity of the self-financing post-secondary education sector. The college considers that compliance with the code should be voluntary and a delicate balance would need to be struck between accountability and autonomy, which may be threatened and compromised under the circumstance. We also find it unfair and unproductive not to distinguish between self-financed post-secondary institutions and self-financed community colleges of UGC-funded institutions in the same study. In fact, the two are different regimes operating under different demands on governance, accountability, and accreditation standards. In other words, for the development of a healthy and thriving self-financed post-secondary education sector, we need to promote positive and constructive competition, and we need to establish a level playing field, which is now sadly lacking. Thank you, Chairman. Now, um so uh, one deputation um, hasn't spoken, uh, and I'll allow him to speak before I invite the secretary to reply. Mr. Lee Chun Hei from the Civic Party. Yes, good morning. Um, uh, we, we've seen um, problems of the uh, self-financing post secondary education, secondary sector. For example, over enrollment, or even the the uh, the selling of um, um, a post secondary self-financing um, institution. We have to enhance transparency and. Um, also, um, governance of the institutions, but then. Uh, we can see that um, um, the problem in the sector is that education or uh, education services have become like products, and we've seen uh, vicious competition instead of constructive competition. Uh, we are told that the number of secondary school leavers will drop in the coming years, and as a result, those who satisfy the minimum requirements can um, receive um, UGC funded or self financing post secondary education. Then does it mean that, that um there will be a uh, reduction in the demand for um associate degree um courses and places? So we don't want to see any more vicious competition. We don't want to see um, programs being scrapped and um, institutions having to close down. The Civic Party is of the view that there should be proper planning concerning the number of places and the programs to be provided by the various institutions. We don't want self-financing post-secondary institutions to expand excessively because this will lead to vicious competition. And also, in um, um, planning for the uh, suitable number of places, um, um, consideration should be given to uh, future manpower demand in society. Some employers have said that uh, for um, um, associate um, degree uh, holders, especially um, those um, who graduated from uh, self-financing institutions, um, they may not possess the uh, skills um, that are um, needed by employers and by society. And it is said that uh, some associate degree um, holders have uh, really no alternatives but to have to continue to um, um, 
artic articulation courses. And then um, uh, there are some courses um, or programs uh, which um, I introduced. And then one or two years later, because of um, insufficient number of students, the um, programs um, are scrapped. So the Civic Party uh, thinks that more should be done uh, with regard to the um, design of programs and also the introduction of programs. And also there should be um, comprehensive reviews conducted by the government to make sure that the development of the self-financing post-secondary sector can really meet the needs of society. Thank you. All right, so all the deputations um, in session one have already spoken. And now may I invite the Secretary for Education to give a preliminary response. And after the Secretary has spoken, members can ask questions. All right, uh, members who wish to ask questions can now raise their hands and uh, the clerk can um, jot down your names. All right, so uh, can the secretary now give um, a uh, concise and brief um, response um, to the comments made by the deputations? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I want to say that I'm grateful to the uh, institutions and individuals for their suggestions and comments. Concerning um, the, uh, the Code of Practice um, and uh, the uh, report on uh, um, governance and quality assurance, um, deputations have given uh, many comments and criticisms. I want to say that the proposed code of um, practice belongs to all stakeholders. In other words, uh, teachers, students, all members of the public, um, and also um, accreditation agencies and the institutions. So it's important that um, the um, code of good practices um, on governance and QA can um, balance the interests of various parties. And now I would like to give um, some response. Concerning disclosure of financial information by institutions, the administration is of the view that um, institutions need to respect the right to know of students and members of the public, and this um, need should be balanced um, against um, the um, internal operational needs of the institutions concerned. We have to be transparent. We need to um, be accountable to members of the public. Um, the um, proposed code um, has been uploaded onto um, the relevant platforms. And we um, will be um, producing Q&As on the um, proposed code of good practices. Um, concerning the uh, governance structures in different institutions are different, as mentioned by um, uh, the deputations. We have to be um, careful. Uh, uh, in fact, different institutions have their uh, organization, different organizational setups, missions, and so we hope that different institutions can. Carry out their assessments and reviews on the basis of their un uh, respective um, situations and characteristics. Um, concerning the codes of um, good practices or the code of good practices, it should apply to the um, entire self financing post secondary sector. Of course, I understand that there are also community colleges under UGC funded institutions. I think um, institutions can um, 
drop their own arrangements based on their own characteristics. I want to say that self-financing institutions enjoy a high degree of autonomy and academic. They enjoy academic freedom. Um, a high degree of autonomy and academic freedom represent um, some of the core values in, Ho in the Hong Kong community. Self-financing institutions um, do not receive recurrent subvention from the government. And so our oversight rec uh, mechanism um, is uh, based on reasonableness and proportionality. So we hope to promote good governance. We want to pro um, protect the interests of the public and the students. All right, um, Mr. Loy, do you have anything to add? Chairman, I want to say that um, the sec what the Secretary has said uh, represents the broad directions of um, the work of our committee. We have been trying to increase transparency and enhance um, governance and quality. We understand the expectations of the stakeholders. The uh, consultancy study report has been published. And this study um, makes recommendations uh, on good practices, especially in the areas of governance and QA. And we've already got the draft code of good practices. We uh, look forward to receiving views from the stakeholders so that we can have more detailed discussion within the committee. We understand that disclosure of financial information by institutions is a highly controversial recommendation. But then there is this requirement in uh, many places um, in the world. Um, now for this code, it's going to be adopted on a voluntary basis, but we still hope that uh, there can be um, as much disclosure as possible for the um, information of the public. We will definitely um, take on board the uh, comments um, expressed or given by deputations today. And I understand that the uh, recommendation of financial disclosure is the most controversial recommendation. Right, so uh, members can now ask questions. May I remind members that under Rules of Procedure 83A, if members have direct or indirect pecuniary interest in the matters being discussed, they need to declare their interest before they speak or ask questions. All right. Um, for those who've raised their hands, I've got the list here. Helena Wong, uh, En Cheng, Yip Kin Yun, Sit Ho. Anyone else? Anyone else who would like to ask questions? I have to end this session at 10.45 because there is a ses session two, so there may not be the second round of Q&A. Okay, if there isn't the second round, then I will offer more time. So question plus answer, four minutes. If you would like the secretary to answer your questions, please reserve some time for him. Otherwise, there won't be time for the secretary to answer you. I have then to stop you, then you may feel embarrassed. Okay, thank you for showing interest. Thank you, deputations, for sharing your views with us. I'm very happy to see this consultation or this consultant's report. It is recommended that there should be a code of practice on the governance of the um, self-financing bodies. But then if the code is only voluntary in nature, I am worried. So much money and effort is being spent, and we have taken reference from overseas. Secretary, Mr. Loy, 
so many recommendations are being put forth. If all the um, institutions are not interested to um, buy in, then what kind of incentives are there to enable more institutions to join? That's the first question. Secondly, from these recommendations, I have learned a lot. I now know that in other countries, there are quite a number of good codes of practice. Now, development has been fast in this sector, and gradually it has become um, a business. But then the government or the public can't see the accounts, and gradually there will be some um, odd development. That is when the business is not making money, the business will be sold out, and there may be uh, over enrollment or admittance of students. I think uh, that should be the right to know by the public. Education should not be regarded as business. So in relation to governance, uh, there should be stronger uh, quality supervision. Now, we are told about other countries' circumstances. The governance structure of colleges should be made clearer. Should there be a statutory law? Now, I wonder whether this is possible for self-financing institutions. I hope the government can tell us. If that is not feasible, then how can we make sure that the management of the institutions can clearly um, say that there will be representatives in the governance body from various stakeholders? In Australia, most of these institutions' governance bodies are such that most members are outside of the institutions. They aren't employees or students of the institutions. So there are two directions. First, uh, school affairs should be demo democratized. There should be representatives of uh, students as well as from outside. And uh, there should also be more outside representatives. Now, based on what I know, there aren't many representatives. Governing body can uh, invite whoever they like, and the Education Bureau doesn't pay much attention to this. So I want to listen to the government's view or uh, Mr. Lawyer's views. Secretary or Mr. Lawyer? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Member, for the question. I would make a simple response about the principles, and then our Deputy Secretary can uh, respond in relation to the laws. Yes, please go ahead. Overall speaking, even though the code is going to be voluntary in nature, now uh, a number of points are made about treating education as business. There are representatives from so many institutions. We are talking about not-for-profit organizations. They have their own uh, objectives and principles. They would like to um, offer education. So if you say that they are make, they are trying to make money, they are like businesses, I think this is not fair to these institutions in attendance. I would like our Deputy Secretary to talk about the law. Thank you, Chairman. UGC-funded institutions uh, are regulated by different laws. For self-financing institutions, there is no law governing them. But in terms of the mechanism, it doesn't mean that the government uh, doesn't care about these self-financing institutions in their operations and when they offer programs. The uh, profession, uh, prof academic and professional qualification accreditation body uh, will look carefully at the structure, financial position, and requirements of the programs of these institutions. And all these elements must be in line with the requirements. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, please reserve time for um, responses to be made. Next, Ms. Chang Lai Wan. Thank you, Chairman. We have to look at both sides of the issue. In early 2000, the government said that they hoped that more Hong Kong students could have the opportunity to be admitted to tertiary institutions, and later, the government introduced policies to encourage more people to establish tertiary institutions. Today, in 
If you talk about secondary students getting into tertiary institutions, the ratio is 60 percent, and、uh, the government's initial objective has been reached. This is a good thing. If you refer to the government's table, many educational institutions are asked to be self-supporting. Now, I think many of them are struggling. Some of them may be making a loss. Some of them may、uh, just be able to break even.、Uh, some colleges may be more reputable. So、um, after some years of operation, they may have a surplus. If there are some laws that may affect their future operation a lot, and if the government is not offering funds to help them, and if you still want to、um, subject them to a lot of、uh, restrictions, then they will be in a more difficult position. They only have two alternatives: one, increase tuition fee, and two, admit whoever would like to. Um, enter. Now they need to survive. They have to operate. And if you say no to everything, then at the end of the day, they will have to close down. So the government must take into consideration both sides of the story. On one hand, members of the public and the students、uh, may say that they would、uh, increase tuition fee as whenever they like. Now, if I、um, study in the college for like three to four years, well, can you at least tell me how much money I have to pay that you won't increase fees for the coming three to four years? So, in this way,、uh, students won't、um, experience the, the 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 problem of not being able to afford. And、uh, of course, we don't want to see these colleges being turned into education shops. Now in Hong Kong, there are a lot of clubs and、uh, soccer grounds and so on, and、uh, many of them have turned have been turned into clubs on membership basis. And a membership may cost one million, in excess、uh, an excess of one million. So we do understand the public concerns. I want to ask the secretary concerning this code of practice. Did anyone say that、uh, they would not like to join, or is it true that there are only a couple of points that are of concern? For instance, disclosure of financial data. Ms. Tian, can you、uh, allow time for the secretary to answer? There is only ten、uh, seconds remaining. Secretary, a brief response, please. Concerning our quality assurance mechanism, there are a lot of、uh, elements.、Um, there are members in the committee, and、uh, there are also parts of the work、um, being taken up by. People employed from outside. As regards the format of subsidy, we have a 3.5 billion uh, subsidy uh, fund, and we also have scholarship and grants.、Uh, they can offer financial assistance to students and、uh, institutions. Thank you, Secretary. Next, Deputy Chairman Mr. Yip Kin Yun, four minutes. Please set a good example. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, deputations, for coming, so that we have a better understanding of various institutions. Just now, we heard that some colleges have to、uh, use their own funds, and different institutions are in different circumstances. This point is important. Concerning self-financing institutions, I think the Education Bureau should、uh, do two things: first, support; number two. Uh, regulation or monitoring. Importance should be attached to both. Just now, Professor David Moore from the Hong Kong UST raised a concept. In the QA process, fees will be incurred. 
should the students and the government show the the fees together uh, according to a certain proportion? The fees should not be all borne by students. Now, concerning um, the tuition fee or learning fees, that should also be um, a sharing by the two sides. Later on, I hope the Education Bureau can elaborate on this point about fees. Some people asked whether there can be direct financial assistance to students and uh, institutions. About monitoring, I want to make two points. Okay, there is this code of practice. It is going to be voluntary in nature. Apart from that, I think should there be some rigid supervision? I think um, the uh, tertiary uh, education ordinance should also be amended. Um, rigid. Uh, supervision is important, or mandatory supervision is also important. Now, the points I may just now don't need to be responded. But the following point, for the following point, I hope that there would be a response. Disclosure of financial information. In some cases, we need to be more stringent. But um, is this requirement too stringent about disclosure of financial data? I think policies should be consistent. For primary and secondary schools, well, there is uh, some school. There are some schools that are DSS, and they get direct subsidies from the government. But then their financial reports to the government uh, are very simple. There are no details. Sometimes they only need to give the ratios, but not absolute figures. For self-financing institutions, you are now asking for a disclosure of financial details. Well, is this too stringent or lenient? Uh, then where is the consistency of the policies? Secretary, thank you. If we do an overall observation, we can see that the degree of transparency is the precondition. Everybody has the right to know. And uh, students are stakeholders. This is important to them. So uh, expenses must be made transparent. Secondly, there must be quality assurance. There are a number of mechanisms on quality assurance. Chairman, there is only half a minute left. I hope the secretary can focus on this point about consistency. Okay, about consistency of policies. If you refer to DSS, well, they are getting uh, subsidies, and according to the law, there are requirements on the accounting reports of schools. They have to comply with these requirements, but the accounting reports don't need to be publicized. As I said, there are two channels. First, they can disclose our information, including the number of scholarships, and or at least they have to give uh, some ratios. Thank you, Secretary. Next, Ms. Sitho. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, deputations, representatives from various institutions for coming to present their views. The point that was made most is Disclosure of financial position may lead to wrong interpretation and unnecessary misunderstanding. And uh, there is also the worry about unnecessary public pressure that they may have to face. Now, if institutions get uh, assistance in terms of land and financials, um, if public funds are used, there must be an account given to the public. Today, uh, we have representatives from students as well as the accreditation body, and both of them are of the view that it is necessary to disclose financial position. And Dr. Yun uh, is most positive about this point. Yes, it is okay to have surplus or even a lot of surplus. If you let the public know that you use the surplus uh, in the form of scholarship, or if you can disclose the development direction, then uh, the public will know. Concerning the possibility of uh, wrong interpretation by disclosure of financial data, what is actually your genuine concern? 
Can there be one law that incorporates all self-financing institutions? And what about the point about uh, student representatives being the uh, uh, being the um, definite or mandatory uh, members of the school uh, governance body? Professor Yun, I'm worried that sometimes the media may overgeneralize the uh, financial data, then there will be unnecessary pressure on the colleges. If there is a surplus, does that mean that definitely tuition fees should not be increased? The surplus may be earmarked for certain developments. Yes, we can give explanation, but then the media sometimes don't accept explanation. They will report that there is so much surplus due. The college wants to increase tuition fees. Now, quality of teaching should be monitored, and uh, we must make sure that financial resources are appropriately used. I think the quality assurance body uh, can monitor the accounts, and they can make a judgment. I think this is good enough to protect the students and the public. Any response? Dr. Chen, I want to supplement. I agree with um, Professor Yip about the reasonableness and proportionality. Yes, public funds are involved, but then uh, what about the other industries? Are they subject to the same uh, requirements? No matter whether a college announces that it has a surplus or deficit, uh, there is a negative impression among the public and the media. You can, you must break even. If you have a surplus, you are accused of making a profit. If you have a loss, then you will be asked to close down. Any response, Professor Wong? Now, our school sponsoring body is a Buddhist uh, organization, and uh, in the past 40 odd years, as far as I know, um, loss was being incurred. They only charged very low tuition fee, and the loss is being subsidized by the school sponsoring body. After setting up the uh, Nanyan College, we now have a, a non profit making a uh, company to run the school, and it is required that every year the financial statements and audited reports have to be submitted to the company registrar. Uh, the same model is being adopted by many colleges. If you want to have a good understanding of the institution's financial position, you can get the uh, annual audited statements from the company registrar. Now, if we are to disclose some simple data, now, Professor Yun, um, Polytechnic U may be making a lot of money, uh, and for us, Nanyan, every year we have to um, offer a lot of grants and scholarship, but we make sure that money is well spent. We charge tuition fee, and uh, if there is any uh, shortfall, the school sponsoring body will um, uh, fill the gap. Now, we are worried that if we make a loss, then people will say that we are not uh, offering good quality, then we should close down. It is good to have um, a loss. Because education is about investment. We are not there necessarily to make money. Yes. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Fong? I would want to talk about disclosure. For the self-financed colleges, of course, this is an issue. For the for our school, Hangsang, every year we have a small deficit, and we have to handle that small deficit every year. But for disclosure, if we make this public, well, of course, we are willing to invest, and. The media may actually misunderstand and think that we may have to close shop soon, that we have not been running well because we've been making a deficit. So talking about the UGC funded universities and the independently funded colleges, they are really very different. I think for the profitable uh, profitability. I think the UGC-funded universities are even more profitable. But then 
you do not say, oh, they are profitable, but Hang Seng uh, should also be profitable. That is not the case. Or self, other self-funded universities or colleges, they may not be money-making. Yes, um, there were some representatives saying that they fear the media to comment on whether they're loss-making or profit-making. Uh, would you please not just think about the media, please also think about the students. The students want to know why is the school making money, why is it not making money, why is it profitable and what is it going to use with the profits. I think the students need to know. If you allow the students to have more information, they will feel that they are a part of the school. They will have a better sense of belonging. <coughs> yes, I hear you clearly. Leung Kwok Hong, Chair, first of all, I do not understand why it is a pressure felt by the colleges and the uh, universities that they have to make public their financials. Of course, some people some quarters may misunderstand, some may try to mislead, but on the other hand, if you cannot explain to the community why some people want to mislead and why some people want to misunderstand, if you cannot make that clear and explain that to the community, then how can you be teaching? I mean, you are the universities. We cannot accept non-disclosure. You say disclosure will be lethal. No, they never said that. I think nobody said that. Well, they said uh, disclosure may lead to uh, people misleading or people uh, being misled or misunderstanding. And they think that that is very grave. That's what they said. Now, what is the crux of the issue? I think the, well, for Hong Kong, the um, GDP per capita is very high compared to the other countries in the world, and also Hong Kong has no uh, borrowings as a government. So if we take the GDP or the budget, the sp uh, sponsorship to the uh, tertiary in uh, education had not increased enough. But of course the government wants to say they have done everything and have done everything well. The crux of the issue is that you have insufficient funds. You have insufficient resources. How can you make a good dish without the ingredients for the uh, for of food? I think you are too timid, too cowardly. Um, please be careful with your wording, Mr. Um, the Honourable um, Mr. Lam. Well, um, well, I, I am saying that. Let us not be too timid, because if there is not enough funding, the universities and the colleges <clears throat> cannot be well operated. Now, further, um, sixty percent of the population of Hong Kong is to be tertiary educated. I mean, that's been raised by the government, and that was some time ago raised by the government, and Donald Zhang and C. Y. Leung were not able to build that up, substantiate that. I mean, that is the crux of the issue. All of you from the universities and colleges coming up here Looking at this kind of shoddy input into our education and having to face the uh, enrollment rate much like uh, Singapore, I mean, apart from turning out these uh, some of the shoddy associate degrees, well, one doesn't know how one can resolve that problem. I don't know what C. Y. Leung is doing. Now, uh, C. Y. Leung is not here today. Well, then perhaps we should ask Mr. Eddie Ng to respond. 
Mr. Ng. Well, the uh, ten-year free education, uh, fifteen-year education, is developing well, and seventeen billion, of which three point five billion, will be set up as a fund to benefit. Uh, from student loans and sponsorships and subsidies um, to the tune of uh, 15,000. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is insufficient and it is not fairly distributed and allocated. Uh, who else would want to speak? Who else? Well, I actually quite agree with Mr. Leung, who just spoke. But when it comes to money, <clears throat> it is a very real thing we're talking about. Let me raise an example. Last year, <clears throat> a lot of uh, secondary school leavers wanted to come to our college, and there were a lot of applications. And uh, every time we have a $70, $80, or $100 deposit for application, and because there were so many students, I think that some total came up to close to a million. I don't remember the f exact figure. And then the media, <clears throat> I mean the newspapers, got wind of this, and they said, oh, they are uh, getting undue profits from this. But you see, processing the application takes resources. We need people to process them. And of course, if there's any balance, we will use that into uh, for the school. But if there is this kind of misleading circulation in the media, it's difficult for us to respond. Well, I very much agree with Mr. Lang Kwa Hong. The chief executive at the time did say commit 60% of the students of Hong Kong being able to enter universities, but it had always stood at 15,000 students only, and the rest of them had to apply for self-funded colleges and associate degrees. But for these students, apart from the uh, site of the school, it had been zero subsidy to these students. Uh, it is 18,000 per year Hong Kong dollar subsidy for the university students at the uh, funded universities, but zero, I would say zero dollar for the associate degree students. Uh, yeah, I will speak very briefly. I think coming to this meeting, I feel so unhappy because I hear a lot of people saying that uh, we are riddled with problems, our kind of uh, colleges, and uh, we are but education shops. Well, I can tell you, I've been through working at different colleges. I can tell you the presidents or the heads of the colleges are very disciplined people, very dedicated people, and the school sponsoring body bodies are very responsible as well. I do not see any one of them as a et shop, as you call it. Please refrain from using that phrase anymore. Uh, Professor Li Ling Kong? Yes, I agree with Mr. Chan just now. Yes, the government's uh, sponsorship through the UGC and the privately funded college is a comparison of one or full to zero. And I agree that the government should ask the accountable and self-funded colleges as to whether they should be um, subsidized. Perhaps we can consider subsidizing students and self-funded colleges and uh, for the students to take up these uh, programs. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Ng? Yes, there is a 3.52 billion fund to um, fund the matching um, uh, grants, the uh, research grant, and also the students. It is exactly this basket of uh, subsidies uh, sponsoring the students. Mr. Ma. Now, for the matching fund, I do not think that this can be utilized or allocated to the self-financed colleges. So I query Mr. Ng's answer given just now. 
Yes, the subsidy to the eight universities is on operation, operating costs of the universities, but not so for the subsidies to the other colleges. So it is not the same. I, I would like to close the session, and I thank you for coming up to the LegCo today. If you have any scripts for your uh, speech, would you please mark down your name on the script and, send, and uh, turn it over to our staff here. Thank you very much. We will start the, begin, uh, the meeting again in eight minutes at 11.